In English, past participles as adjectives modify and describe nouns and pronouns. They are identical to the form of a participle, which typically ends in ed, hence they're derived from verbs. Although each one has a different form, they all behave the same as any other adjective. They're used for perfect and passive tenses, and their action is done to the subject of a phrase, using auxiliary verbs like to be and to have. Also known as participial adjectives, they describe the condition of something, typically using ed, or say that something is related to an action, using ing. Because of how it's formed, a participial adjective can be differentiated from regular adjectives. Participial adjectives describe nouns and pronouns using a verb. Regular adjectives are accompanied by a noun whose role is to describe a trait. This is the difference between a participial and a regular adjective, and in this video I'll give demonstrations of both because their use can be confusing. I've actually already covered the meaning of past participles in my past verb conjugation videos, so I would recommend re-watching them because I will be using some verbs from those videos. Besides, when past participles are used as adjectives, they are very prevalent in the passive voice. Again, being a future topic, the passive voice is something worthy of mention as it is the foundation of participial adjectives. The passive voice is a grammatical construction where the subject of a sentence receives the action of the verb. This means that the focus is on the object being acted upon rather than the thing acting, so the subject is acted upon instead of doing something. It's also used with the preposition by, and I will exploit it in the video. As I mentioned, they're used for passive tenses because their action is done to the subject of a sentence, and they're very common with to be in all tenses of time. Additionally, their form is necessary for perfect tenses, which use the auxiliary verb to have, and they will be explained in the next videos straight away. Some examples that only used to be are The tree was chopped. This house is not purchased. The actions were done successfully. This lesson is not finished. The cake was eaten by the children. They are both drunk. Each phrase has a subject, a conjugated verb to be, and a participial adjective that acts upon the subject, along with other English concepts. We can tell all of these are adjectives because they come from verbs, and even though some end in ed, the others have different forms that still act as adjectives. This is why it's important to know the past participle forms of a lot of verbs. Because they are similar to regular adjectives, it's easy to confuse them with other parts of speech. But remember, regular adjectives are accompanied by a noun that describes a trait. So if a word is doing something else in a sentence, it is not a participial adjective. Here's a simple difference. The tree is tall has a regular adjective because it's a trait that is not derived from a verb. The tree was chopped has a verb with ed, so it's a participial adjective. This house is not clean has a regular adjective, but this house is not purchased has a participial adjective. This lesson is good has a regular adjective, but this lesson is not finished has a participial adjective. The difference can be told using the form of the adjective, so if it's a participle that was modified, it's a participial adjective. Otherwise, it's a simple regular adjective. To further tell what makes a participial adjective, we can see that it acts upon the subject instead of the subject acting. So, the word chopped describes the tree, acting like an adjective. Purchased describes the house, like an adjective. Done describes the actions, finished describes the lesson, and so on. Additionally, it's possible to implement participial adjectives directly with the subject without relying on verbs. The chopped tree, the purchased house, the finished lesson, the eaten cake, the drunk couple. This way, the adjectives are still participial, but they're positioned formally. This process can be done with any adjective. Here are more examples with other English concepts. The gift was given to me. The house was made by him. Everything is said perfectly. The dog was seen in the park. The song was sung by the artist. This sentence is spoken out loud. My phone was taken by the teacher. This book was written a long time ago. These sentences use irregular participial adjectives that act upon the subjects. 
Moreover, the passive voice is very clear in this level of writing because each subject is acted upon by something else. By him, by the artist, by the teacher, and so on. This is what makes the passive voice, but again, it's a future topic. Given describes the gift, seen describes the dog, spoken describes the sentence, and so on. Just like before, we can use the adjectives formally, but only some can be used for rephrasing, because others are not logical enough. Some examples are the given gift, the spoken sentence, the taken phone, and the written book. Others can also change only if their adjective makes sense. Ultimately, participial adjectives describe the condition of something, and across the examples, they demonstrate exactly that. But they can also say something related to an action using a different form with ing. Up until now, some examples used ed, while others were irregular. But participial adjectives can also be created from present participles. By relying on linking verbs, they can be used as subject complements, which are words that function as adjectives. For instance, in the phrase, he takes his driving test today, the word driving is the participial adjective that modifies the noun test, so it indicates that the test is meant to be driven. Despite this form using ing, this present participial adjective is simple to recognize because it's placed before nouns. Other examples are, I had a relaxing day. He was late for his swimming lesson. She found her coloring book. There was an alarming noise. We watched an exciting movie. They stayed in the boring class. In these sentences, the adjectives are still participial, so they're positioned formally. The adjective relaxing is the subject complement that describes the day. The sentence means that the day caused me to relax. Swimming is the subject complement that describes the lesson. Coloring is the subject complement that describes the book. Alarming is the subject complement that describes the noise, and so on. At the same time, some adjectives can be rephrased using to be, just like the previous examples. My day was relaxing. The noise was alarming. The movie was exciting. This class was boring. At last, participial adjectives can also function as comparatives and superlatives, but because they use longer words, they're preceded by more, less, most, and least. Some examples are, this movie is the least exciting. This lesson is the most detailed. I am less daring than my sister. That woman was more convinced than the man. Anyhow, this is how participial adjectives work in English.